In this video, we will share water agar and why you would utilize it in home mycology. Water agar is utilized to give the mycelium a chance to grow while not competing with contamination in the growth process. It allows the mycelium the time to stretch and find nutrients. Spores are inherently dirty, so utilizing agar te techniques allow the home mycologist to clean out any contamination before moving on to the next step of grain spawning. There are dozens of recipes for agar. However, when you break it down to the basics, it's all about nutrition and sugar. We are not talking about cane sugar. We are specifically talking about dextrose, which is in most MEA blends and honey. Some use popcorn grain to create a corn syrup water known as grain water. Water agar has proven for us to be the best recipe when dealing with spores and clones. The idea behind water agar is to give just enough nutrients for the mycelium to branch out while giving very little nutrients for contamination to grow. The resulting growth is generally enough to be able to transfer a clean sample to a more nutrient-dense dish to continue the transferring process. As this process evolves, you will add nutrients to further encourage rhizomorphic growth so you can clearly tell where the best entry points for transfers are occurring. We have discovered that less nutrients seem to be best when it comes to rhizomorphic growth. It seems that if you starve the mycelium, it really branches out to search for more nutrients, resulting in a branched look similar to a root system. The more nutrients you add, it seems to spread out in a more fluffy tomatose style, eating on all the abundance. As you research, you find that rhizomorphic and tomatose will both produce beautiful mushrooms, but it's easier to determine the most viable points to make successful transfers due to the antlering and rhizomorphic growth. Our recipe uses 10 grams of agar for 500 milliliters of boiling purified water. Or you can use 5 grams of agar for 250 milliliters of water. The size of your plate and how full you fill your plates will determine how many dishes you will create. We use a heated magnetic stir plate in boiling water with an infrared temperature gun. However, you can use a stove top and saucepan. Using boiling purified water makes the task of mixing agar without it gelling or clumping much easier. The temperature gun allows you to monitor the temperature as you do not want to overcook it. We also use the temp gun in the cooling process. Once you have allowed the agar to completely dissolve without clumping, then you're ready to sterilize in the pressure cooker. You will want to pressure cook for 20 minutes at 15 PSI, then allow the bottles to cool between 140 and 120 degrees before pouring your dishes. We allow our bottles to cool while stirring on the magnetic plate with the heat off and monitor it with the temperature gun. Make sure everything is sterilized before pouring agar to plates inside a still air box. Pouring one plate at a time quickly, taking the tops off, pouring, and replacing the top before moving on. Make sure the plate you're pouring into is flat, that it's sitting on an even surface. Do not overfill and try not to shake the agar till it's completely cooled. You do not want it to splash up around the sides or onto the lid. Allow your plates to cool to room temperature. If you see condensation, just flip your plates upside down. You can even store them upside down. We recommend that you wait 24, 48, even 72 hours to make sure that your plates do not have any contamination before you use them for transfers or spores.